The next flip flop is clocked SR flip flop. The clocked SR flip flop contains four gates, wherein the first two gates is of S bar R bar latch. With the help of S bar R bar latch, we can explain the working of clocked SR flip flop. The difference between this circuit and the unmodified modified circuit unclocked flip flop is of this clock input. This acts as an additional control to the flip flop. If the clock is zero, then the flip flop will be inactive and enters into hold state. If the clock is applied, then the flip-flop works just like unclocked SR flip-flop. The truth table and the block diagram of clocked SR flip-flop is here. The block diagram shows the PGT that is positive going transition of a clocked SR flip flop. That means this flip flop will be active when a clock is applied at a positive going transition. That is when clock pulse is making a transition from low to high state. The working of clocked SR flip-flop can be explained with these five cases. Case 1, when clock is 0, if this clock is 0, one of the input to gate 3 and 4 is already at low state. Hence, these two inputs are not required at all to arrive at the output. When clock is 0, the gates 3 and 4 produce as a high output. Now, S bar and R bar both are at high state. Hence, the output of gate 1 and 2 depends on the past outputs and hence it enters into hold state. It is shown here with an example. Previously, the flip-flop was in reset state. This 0 at Q is fed back to gate 2. Now, gate 2 input is low. Hence, it maintains a high output. That means Q bar remains in the same state. This one is fed back here. Hence, gate 1 has two high inputs which maintains remains the gate output as 0 only. Hence, when clock is 0, flip-flop will not operate. It will be inactive and enters into latch or hold mode. Thus, the state is called as hold state or no change state or previous state. Case 2 that is when clock is applied but S is equal to R is equal to 0. When S is equal to R is equal to 0 the gate 3 and 4 produces a high output. Again this is like a previous case the output of gate 1 and 2 depends on the past output. Hence, it enters into hold state or there is no change in the output or this state is also called as previous state. Case 3. When clock is 1, S yes is 0 and R is 1. Now, it is very clear that the input to gate 3 is at low state. 
hence the output will be 1 that is s bar is equal to 1. Similarly, gate 4 has both high input hence its output will be 0 that is r bar is equal to 0. Now, gate 2 has a low input hence it produces a high output. This is fed back here. Gate 1 has both high inputs hence its output remains at low state. Because the normal output Q is 0, this state is called as reset state. Next case, when clock is applied, S is equal to 1, R is equal to 0. Now one of the input to gate 4 is at low state, hence its output will be high. Both the inputs to gate 3 are at high state, hence its output is at low state. That means gate 1 has a low state, gate 2 has a high state as inputs. So gate 1 output will be forced to be at high state and this is fed back here. Hence both the inputs are at high state, gate 2 produces a low state. Now the normal output is high, hence the state is called as set state. The last state when all the inputs are high that is when clock is applied S is 0, R is 0. Now both the gates 3 and 4 acts as a NOT gate because its inputs are at high state hence they produce as a low output. Now one of the input to both gate 1 and 2 are at low state hence they are forced to be at high output. But the law of flip-flops output that is law of complement states that the outputs of the flip-flop should always be complement to each other. The state is against the law of complement hence the state is called as invalid state and has to be forbidden because otherwise the circuit will be damaged if we operate this state for a long time. The pin, uh, timing diagram of a clocked SR flip-flop. This arrow mark shows that this is a PGT flip-flop. That means clock is making a transition from 0 to high. When it is making a transition from 0 to high, this is called as PGT. Whereas if it is making a transition from 1 to 0, this will be called as NGT negative edge triggered. Now this example timing diagram is for PGT. Now the arbitrary inputs of R and S are as shown here. According to these inputs the output will be changed. When clock is applied I have to see only at this instant of time. When clock is applied R is 0, S is 0 and you can see that when both are 0 with a clock applied, it is a hold state. We have assumed Q is equal to 0 initially, hence this will be in a hold state until the next clock pulse that is PGT is applied. At this state, R is 0, S is 1, hence it is a set state. This state will remain till the next PGT. Now at this next PGT, R is 1 s is 0 hence it is a reset state whereas in the next pgt r also 0 s also 0 it is a hold state so till the next pgt it will be in a hold state and in this last condition you can observe s is 1 r is 1 and q is 1 if i take a q bar q bar also remains at high state in this state Hence, this state is called as invalid state. This is the explanation of clocked SR flip-flop. Now, the drawback of clocked SR flip-flop. The major drawback of a clocked SR flip-flop is invalid state. As I told earlier, when the flip-flop operates in this state for a long time, then the flip-flop will be damaged. Hence, this state 
has to be avoided this will be the major drawback or disadvantage of clogged sr flip flop thanks for watching please subscribe like and share to learn electronics in a simple way also you can suggest the topics you want to learn so that i can put it that in the next video thanks once again